Growing up, I was always big into sports. I loved being active. I loved being competitive. I dreamed about reaching a personal best time and scoring the game-winning shot. My junior year of high school soccer was no different. I woke up the same as I do every morning on game day, with the excitement to compete, to win, and to have fun. I went throughout my high school day with only soccer on my mind. I passed my teammates in the hallway, all with matching quarter zips showing off our school name in gold lettering. We joked about the game. After what seemed like the longest school day, I jumped off the bus just dreaming about walking out on the field later that afternoon. The day had been such a blur that I completely forgot that I had offered to take care of my neighbor's cat. I already felt like I was in a rush to get to the game, yet my mom and I still managed to leave a few minutes early. We pulled into the neighbor's driveway, and I ran to the back door. I moved quickly through the house, getting the cat some water and cleaning up. I barely even said hi to her. I was just so antsy to get to the game. As I was walking out, I realized I had completely forgotten to actually feed her. I turned back around, almost tripping over the carpet, and grabbed a can of food. I brought it over to the counter, near the sink, and started to pull. Before I knew it, my hand was covered in blood. Blood spewed everywhere. Over the sink, the counter, the window above. I was in shock. I knew what had happened, but couldn't feel it. I started to run towards the door to where my mom was parked outside. I knocked on the window so hard she wasn't sure how to react. All I could sputter was, bloody hand, and we rushed back inside to the sink. I didn't think twice about pushing the white door open with my freshly cut hand on the way back in. We deal with that later, my mom said. Immediately, my hand was rinsed under cold water, and I suddenly came to the realization that I might be late to my game. I wasn't okay with this at all. I tried to make excuses, convincing myself I was fine, all while ignoring the fact that my hand was cut open to the bone. My mom just didn't say anything. She knew we were going to get stitches, and she knew that I wasn't going to like it. On the way there, I managed to call my coach. Being in shock, I couldn't really give her accurate details about what was happening. All I could manage to say was that I was bleeding, and I'm on my way to the hospital. I hung up the phone and noticed I was really lightheaded. Next thing I knew, I'm walking back to the car, stitches in hand, and a cup of orange juice in the other. Feeling a million times better, now that the torture was over, I looked at the clock. It was 6.14. The game had started at 5.45. I knew I'd make it for the second half and began to put on my gear. I couldn't miss this game. It was a rival game, and we needed to win. We pulled up to our turf, and I ran out of the car. <laughs> I guess that was my warm-up. I ran over to my team's bench with a huge smile. Everyone wanted to know what happened, but I just went straight to my trainer and asked her to wrap up my hand. As she did that, my coach came over and said, Are you good to go in? We could really use you. You've been excited for this game for a while now. Before I knew it, I was getting called in by the refs at midfield. I hadn't even paid attention to the score until I was sprinting down the field, trying to steal the ball from our opponent. It was one-to-one. -one. We were tied. There was ten minutes left in the second half. This was it. All I wanted was to contribute to the team, and how perfect would it be to finally score a goal? A really important one. The ball went out of bounds, and I threw it in. I started to run my line down the field towards our goal, just waiting to receive the pass from my teammate. All of a sudden, the ball was in the air, and the only thing keeping it from flying out of bounds was my foot. I felt the weight on my shoulders, but stayed steady. I focused in on the moment and settled the ball. I took one dribble, glanced up at the goalie, and I struck. Top left corner of the net. Perfect. I still wonder if I was really aiming there to begin with. <laughs> That's always what we were taught to do anyway. The clock ticked down to zero, and we had won the game. I didn't really sleep that night. It's as if my nerves kicked in long after the game had ended. I had shown up late and managed to play the best game of my high school career. The excitement of this moment has never died, and the remembrance of anticipation motivates me in every aspect of my life. Looking back on this day, a lot of things happened that just weren't planned. If my mom hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have taken care of myself, but instead have jumped right into the game. So, from this, I have learned that it is okay to accept help from others, no matter how independent I want to be at the time. Also, I never wanted to show up late to my game or get stitches, but I wonder if I would have played as well if I didn't have that push. The threat of not being able to play my sport was a motivation enough. This experience proved to me that even through adversity, I can still make a difference. And sometimes it's better that things don't turn out the way they're planned. <laughs> Aside from having to get stitches, of course.